Hey everybody, and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program RP0. Uh, we're out at Saturn today, the destination of all my failed dreams uh, so far. Anyway, this is the uh, Tartarus Cronus 1, and its mission is to uh, put something, a small probe contained within this fairing, onto the surface of Titan. But uh, first, we need to perform capture around Saturn. Um, it was a weighted decision whether I wanted to do uh, arrow capture, arrow capture assist, or just uh, straight burn for it. And I, based on how little I know about Saturn's atmosphere and how much it's going to affect everything and how delicate our balance is, I've set up a node here which conveniently places our apoapsis at our descending node, which uh, is terrible, about 52 some odd degrees. So it's going to be quite an inclination change, but it is also quite far away. Uh, this capture burn is a bit um, heavy, seeing that we can probably not break quite so hard, although our margin for error between capture and not capture is a little slim there. And I was surprised, 1.4 kilometers per second, even though we're coming in at uh, a little over 3 million meters. So we'll just have to kind of see how all of this goes. We're about 17 hours away from our node. Um, I shifted a bunch of fuel around because I was expecting to do an arrow capture maneuver and then locked all the tanks. So I think what I'm going to do is uh, shift fuel back around uh, into the back of the spacecraft, make it a little more evenly balanced, I guess. And it'll give me a better figure on what our Delta V is actually looking like. That one, oh no, you're not empty. I thought you were empty. Uh, I shifted some fuel from the lander into the main part of the spacecraft. Okay, we have no fuel back there. That's fine. Uh, we do have this tank up here that we can shift also. Uh, that's going to completely top us off. So we'll probably have to shift it into another tank. Yep, not quite there yet. We can pin you open, make you go away. Uh, we'll just shift it down here. There we go. Now we are over our threshold, but we'll leave a little bit extra there for uh, thruster things and stuff and uh, hope that we have enough for this plane change because they are expensive, turns out. And uh, we're quite heavy also, as it turns out. Oh man, is that really all we have? Oh, there's a core up here that has some fuel in it. Yeah, that's locked. And there's still some fuel in the lander. Uh, we'll, uh, we'll leave that alone for right now. So anyway, we uh, RCS is already on. We've got 1,700 or so meters per second. We're just going to wait a uh, few more hours before we start to shift uh, into the node. This should be a very uh, interesting zoom in. That's awesome. Yeah, we're going to come uh, across the south and then uh, up and over the top. This is because uh, I was not given ascending or descending nodes for Saturn the entire flight out here. So I just kind of had to guess. And it was through uh, like a few very small corrections here and there that uh, we were able to get this close. So, uh, you know, here's hoping. Fingers crossed and all the praise for good luck. Ah, oh, I hit the wrong button. I meant to speed up, not slow down. Yeah, so we're going to go right underneath the rings. And, oh man, this thing turned so slowly. Some better thrusters would have been a marvelous idea on this thing. All right. Just kind of get pointed there towards our retrograde vector. Do do says the burn's going to take five minutes. This over here says we can displace 1,700 meters per second in four minutes. 
So our discrepancy continues. But I did get my MechJeb tab back. That uh, that just required copying over the MechJeb folder from my backups. So <laughs> thankfully, I don't have to have all this stuff up here anymore. But it's probably going to stay because, you know, just in case, this install is not exactly stable anymore. Uh, 14 minutes. We can keep this going for just a bit. We'll get it into about the four minute range. Oh no, N time to node needs to be about two and some change. There we go. All right, let's all in our AJ-10. Unlocking controls, thank you. Very stable, ignition. All right, we're lit. So now it's just a, uh, a matter of enjoying the view. Man, that is quite a view. That's actually probably a much better shot. Yeah, I'll take that. All right. I should probably uh, bring my doodads back up. And while we hope and pray that we can nail this burn like we nailed our Pluto encounter and keep that uh, ascending node or descending node, whichever it was, right at our apoapsis, because that would really, really help us out. My last Saturn moon's flyby mission failed because I did not have enough fuel to correct for inclination. And that made me very sad. So I guess I did not expect uh, orbital insertion here at uh, Saturn to take quite so much delta V. Uh, it only really means that we're going to have to be just uh, very careful and very patient with our uh, wait to get an encounter with Titan. Um, because really I think everything we have left at this point is going to be required to correct that inclination. And that being the case, we're probably just going to have to wait until we get a convenient flyby that we can alter into a uh, arrow capture. But um, I guess... Only time will tell, but we're lucky enough to be able to correct to get our uh, ascending descending nodes at our, <coughs> well, near our apoapsis and periapsis. Alright, we will just save that 120 some odd meters per second uh, because it keeps our descending node way, way out here. 52 some odd degrees in 134 days. Let's see what it's going to take to fix this conundrum I've put myself in. Eh, not that much. That's 100 and, yeah, that's about well, a little bit more than what we've saved. I'm okay with this. Let's uh ah 5 degrees, that's still too much. Point five, point three, zero, for 159.2 meters per Oh, and look at that, we're almost at an encounter. Oh, good grief. Now I have to just shoot for it. Dang it. Oh, missed. Yep, okay, come on. There it is. 159 gets us an encounter already. That is awesome. Oh, thank goodness. Let's uh, focus view here and see what kind of encounter we're looking at. It's not great. We probably need to uh, hit the atmosphere. So let's just toy with it a little bit. See what we can't figure out. Oh, where did it go? Okay. Apparently not an encounter anymore. Yeah. Or my scroll wheel sensitivity is messing with me. So let's try to do this. Just, nope. No, not my scroll wheel messing with me. All right, we're going to have to correct that probably after the burn. But uh, from that far out, getting that periapsis down to uh, something inside the atmosphere probably shouldn't take too much effort. That's uh, 134 days, so let's uh, set up alarm clock. Unfortunately, we do have some other things to do before then, so add alarm. Uh, not a whole hell of a lot, though. We have our Venus window, which uh, can mean only one thing. It is time to retry our Project Origami, our uh, rocket-powered Venus aircraft glidery thing. So uh, we will be getting to that.
uh, next episode. Uh, sorry again for the super short one. That is just plain old pretty. But uh, I do need to spend some time figuring out budgeting for this thing, how we're going to do comms, etc., etc., because I need this whole thing in orbit in order for any of this to work. And so to put this whole thing in orbit, based on our fuel, we're probably going to have to aero capture. Titan's a little weird. So uh, I'll be doing some uh, looking around into that stuff, but uh, we'll probably come back to this in uh, just a episode, maybe two. Anyway, that's going to do it for this one, everybody. Thank you so much for hanging out. I do appreciate it, and I will see all of you in the next one. So until then, see you later. Yeah, okay, so not quite. Um, I realized that this episode was pretty short, and I feel like I've really been just uh, not keeping my end of the bargain as far as uh, putting out a fair amount of content. So uh, this is kind of tacked on, and it is kind of a build episode. but when I was thinking about how the Saturn Moon flyby mission kind of failed, I thought that, hey, uh, you know, I got this Jupiter window, the 77 window coming up, and getting something to Saturn would be pretty easy. So why not try to build something again that can uh, maybe do some flybys and gather some pretty good science? So I just started tinkering around with things and really starting to hate RCS build aid because it never tells me uh, anything worthwhile. Yeah, all these circles just being absolutely crazy. So uh, this mission is designed to do flybys of hopefully most, if not all, of Saturn's moons with... Uh, few exceptions, uh, Titan and I Iapetus, uh, just because they're a little out of our purview, and hopefully the Titan stuff will be covered by our Titan lander, but um, why not load this thing up with just absolutely as much science as we can, since we've got a rocket more than capable of uh, sending this to Jupiter, and that's all we really need to do, uh, we might as well load it up and uh, hopefully get enough Delta V to perform the obvious uh, inclination changes and the myriad of small corrections that'll be needed to uh, perform flybys of several moons. We've uh, seen this in practice with our Jupiter flyby mission, uh, the Jossen B-1, which was wildly successful in accomplishing all of its uh, mission goals. So, uh, yeah, one other thing. This uh, bio sample and the uh, goo return, this miniature goo return container, their experiments are listed differently, so I actually wonder if they are different experiments from each other. Um, if they are, if they aren't, we've got some time before we launch this thing, so please let me know down in the comments if they are in fact the same scientific experiment, because if they are, I can shave a little weight off of this guy, even though it's not uh, the most pertinent of things. And the solar particle collector. This thing is heavy and kind of dumb, <laughs> but I wanted to include it anyway because we've got all this cool science stuff and um, I want to get as much out there while we have this window because it's basically like a free Delta V. We don't have to worry about hurling this thing in a single flight all the way out to Saturn since we can slingshot it. We get a, a lot more leeway in how much tonnage we have to work with. So I seriously do want to cram on every single scientific experiment onto this thing that I can. Uh, it's just a matter of balancing the weight. So uh, we're going to <laughs> try very hard to cram as many scientific experiments onto the side of this thing as we can, uh, including some accessory comms because, uh, you know, you never know. We might need it and we might need a relay. And so it's just a matter of keeping everything tucked in and looking nice because... It has to look nice, or, you know, <laughs> why not? So that's why we're going to flip that uh, imager upside down, or right side up, depending on how you want to look at it. And, of course, the ever-persisted doing of random <laughs> adding of things, trying to get that uh, center of mass to balance out. There we go, the irradiant scanner. That should finish out our balancing of the uh, 0.6 tons that the solar particle array uh, took up, and then we'll just uh, balance it out with our core four experiments here. Not bad. Yeah, we're not going to do the flash thing, and I don't think we're going to hit an atmosphere, so we won't need that, and I think the rest of these 
either require return or atmosphere or surface. So center of mass looks pretty good. We can go ahead and start to pack everything away. There we go. Oh yeah. Don't forget the RTGs. We are definitely going to need RTGs. Yeah, I don't know how well I like that. So we'll mount them off to the sides like that. Give those uh, cooling veins plenty of room to work. Yeah. Oh, and since we've got a little tonnage to play with, I'll just uh, up the size on these tanks here and uh, reset their angle. And now it's time for action group. So we're going to need uh, one for our boot sequence, which uh, we've written there, and then another one for our radio in for all of our nifty scientific experiments. So we'll just uh, start to catalog all of that and make sure that we don't miss anything like the RPS antenna that I totally just noticed that I missed. Good for me. All right, now it's time to build out the transfer or the corrective stage uh, since hopefully most of our transferring will be done by um, whatever the upper stage of whatever rocket we launch on will be. And at this point, it's probably looking like it's going to be a DN-1. Although the thought occurs to me that maybe we should upgrade the DN-1, replace those two HG-3s with a single RS-25. And since we can save on our structural fraction by making this just a single fillet cylinder tank and then mounting our avionics below it, uh, this Delta Core actually weighs less than the Agena Core that I typically go with. It, uh, it just doesn't shut down. But that's not really an issue when you're using RTGs as long as you're matching the uh, power output and uh, based on the success we had with our tugs for the Mars program, uh, two RTGs should be able to take care of their its uh, power consumption needs without too much effort. And uh, two RTGs actually weigh less than four solar panels, so we're actually saving mass and uh, helping rid ourselves of icky plutonium or something. I don't know. I don't know how to justify it, but it works on all the metrics, both uh, mass savings and um, mass well, functionality. All right, so we'll just uh, pick a paint scheme. Why not? More foil. Foil looks nice. I don't know how I feel about this, so if you really object to the silver foil, also uh, let me know in the comments. And uh, last but not least, we need a name for this little guy. So, again, down in the comments, if you've got any suggestions on a clever title for our uh, nifty mission to fly by Saturn's uh, inner moons, I'd love to hear from you in the comments. Most votes wins. Anyway, that is actually going to do it for this episode, everybody. Thank you so much for hanging out. I do appreciate it, and I will see all of you in the next one. So until then, see you later.